Elio Costa, welcome back to the show. Thank you very much for the invitation, Mike. Pleasure to be here with you. Yes, it seems so long since we last saw each other. Yeah, um, no. Elio. Not, so, not, so, not so long. Not so. <laughs> Elio has been a fighter pilot. He's been a program manager. He has delivered projects. He knows his stuff. And he's the founder of the Flex model for project management, a truly hybrid project management methodology that covers all the levels from enterprise down to project and even product level. So, Elio, um, I'm sure you're up for a challenge. Uh, I've got six questions that uh, have come yeah. to me from, from uh, our community. Very- I'm very curious about them. <laughs> it's a right. complete surprise. <laughs> and we're going to pick them at random. So let's just take a look. Right. Okay, so we have six questions waiting for you to, uh, to answer them. We're going to pick one at random by rolling a dice. Six. And we've got magic number six. So let's go down to the sixth question and see what it is. Okay, so... Elio, question number six says, this project seems to be bad news yesterday, bad news today, and bad news tomorrow. And I've been saving it all up. How is it best to communicate bad news to my project board? Okay. Wow. (laughs) How do you communicate bad news? A tricky one for you. I'm sure your projects have never had bad news. (laughs) No, projects never had bad news. (laughs) <laughs> What's the best way to, to say bad news? Okay. First of all, I think you must always be truth about something What's going on. Yeah. I think the right way to do this is to say, hey, guys, we have a problem Yeah. right now. This is the reality. I, you don't have to cheat someone. You don't have to say what is not true. Yeah. People sometimes try to hide some things to uh, something that's not good. Okay, tell the truth. Okay, we are in this point right now. This is bad. Tell the truth. But don't go there without a proposal to change things. Yeah. That's the point. Okay, we are in this point. We are bad. We made a lot of mistakes. I think everybody must learn from the mistakes and ingrain the things that mistakes teach you something. Yeah. Okay. I think it's worth saying that, that I think the first mistake this uh, member of our community has made is saving up the bad news. I think it, it it becomes so much harder to deal with two, three, four, five items of bad news in one go that inevitably some serious issues could get missed. Yeah, yeah. You have to tell the truth, learn from them and say, hi, guys, this is the truth. This is the mistake that we did. And so we have to fix it. Mm. And then to fix it, we are planning to do this. Yes. And I think this is the best way to do this. Okay. Recognize your mistake. Okay. Say the truth and try to change it with a basic plan. Yeah. Try to plan something. Okay. Based on this plan, we expect to change things in a certain time or on a certain cost. We use a certain resource. Show that you can change the situation. Yeah. Recognize the mistake and try to show that you can change the situation. I think this is. Bad news are bad news. They yeah. must know that because they have to make decisions. Yeah. And I think the only thing I, I kind of modify on what you said is I wouldn't frame it as a mistake. I mean, it might have been a mistake, but bad news happens for all sorts of reasons. And, okay. of course, the one thing that will not help is blame. And I have a favourite quote from the, the film Papillon um, where the character of Leon Darga says, Blame is for God and small children. You know, it's, it, it's not actually going to solve any problems. And so framing something as a mistake, you know, I think you're absolutely right. I totally agree. The first thing to do is say, this is what has happened. And, and this is what it means. And then the question is, do you understand the situation well enough? Can you show that, that what would be serious would be a project manager who doesn't understand what's happened and therefore what the consequences are and what the options it loses, are. It loses the control and this yeah. is what you can allow it to happen. So yeah. if, if you don't know what's going on, you lose the control. And if you lose control, there's no reason for standing there. It's, yeah. That's the point. <laughs> yeah. And I, I come from um, a kind of project management approach historically, which uses stage gates. And I remember talking with, so in the UK, 
we had we use prints too a lot in our big public sector projects and i remember talking with a very senior a uh, gateway reviewer and he said that you know when you do a gateway review of a massive project you're not looking to see if anything's gone wrong because you know going in things will have gone wrong <laughs> it, it's a big project things go wrong and that's things, not the measure wrong. Yeah, it's not there a is. Of the project manager. There is. And there exactly. Is. Yeah. There is. He said, what really matters, what you really want to establish is does the project manager understand what's gone wrong and have they thought through how they're going to handle it? And so we've we've established so far that you need to you need to be open and honest and upfront and That's deliver it. quickly. Um, you need to understand the situation and as you said, you need to put forward recommendations. Any other any other thoughts? for handling bad news? Uh, no thoughts. I think you, you also should talk to your team. Mm. Should talk to your team and try to improve the situation. I think discuss with your team before you go to tell the good, bad news. Discuss with your team. Try to come to a conclusion of what's going on, what happened, and how you can improve yourself. I think the, the discussion of the problem, the situation, the bad news, why we have bad news now, and how can we change it? How can we improve it as a team? Not as a result for the project, yeah. but as a team. Yeah. I think the internal process is also so important that so important that saying something and change. But I think that this, dealing the situation with your team, I think is very important. It's another thing that how to deal with bad news. Yeah. But bad news is for someone else. Yeah. But for your team, I think you have to think about what's going on, guys. Yeah. And let's do something different. Yeah. Are you committed to change some things? Yes, so let's do it. Yeah. I think it's uh, two, two sides of the same story. Okay, because yeah, you're not. Tell yeah. some bad news for an upper guy, but try to fix the things in your team. Yeah, you, you're not on your own. You've got a team. So use the wisdom of that team to problem solve and find different options and evaluate those options so that you can come. But of course, the other thing is something's going wrong. Your team knows. And yeah. if you're not up front with your team and, and, and you don't get them together to resolve it, then they will be worried that the one person they're looking to to lead them is listen to them, listen to them, yeah. listen to them, learn from them. Yeah. And I, 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 in the new, new release of Flex, I, I'm trying to develop something that's called collaborative wisdom. Mm. I, I forgot about knowledge management. Yeah. Knowledge management is just a part of wisdom. Yeah. And I, I'm trying to do something that's it's called collaborative wisdom. Wisdom is more than knowledge. Yeah. So I quit knowledge management and doing a collaborative wisdom. Guys, you know this, we know that, you know that, you know that. What can we change with this knowledge? How can we apply this knowledge? Yeah. And this is with them. And it's much more effective when you have a collaborative process. This is what I'm calling collaborative wisdom. I like and it. Good. I like it a lot. So you're going to harness your team. You've got you, you're being honest with it, with your team. You're being honest with your your leadership, your governance tiers, what else, all, all the other things. Um, anything else that strikes you, or have we got I, I the think whole process? So. I, think, yeah, I think so. you know, solving the problem with your team and committing your team to change and telling the truth and give some plans to change the situation shows that you are leading something. Yeah, you are on the lead. I think this is, uh, I have the control. I have the control of the team and I have a control of the situation. And this is my plan to change the bad news. I think this is the two topics that uh, I would say. I'll throw, in a, I'll throw in a third, see what you think about it. I think the, mm. the other thing you probably need to be thinking about is having a trigger so that you don't yes. have to sit on something thinking, is this bad enough for me to bother people yeah. or is this too small? And I like the idea of defining almost the kind of level of exception, the scale threshold, of the issue. A threshold, a threshold for Exactly. Something. That triggers the different tiers of process. Now, the informal part, the talking to your team that you've raised, will happen no matter how big or small it is, but it might be a subset of the team or it might be an individual for a small thing. For a big thing, we gather the team together. But in terms of raising it with your project board, your steering committee, your client, whatever i think we need some sort of a threshold that says we need to trigger a process and if you build that process right up front at the start of the project yeah then it's there ready for you and triggering it isn't some sort of a disgrace it's using the tool that you've created yeah um, I, I i think about triggers and just like i 
I, I didn't create the, 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 the word, but it's, I, 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 key risk indicators, mm. KRI, you see? Yeah. Yes, KPIs look backwards and yeah. KRIs looks frontwards. Okay, yeah. you start, what is going to do next? What's the, the trend? What comes yeah. next? This is the trigger for something in the future, yeah. not in past. KPIs and KRIs, key yeah. risk indicators, they work together. What happened in the past and what can happen in the future. So you have good indicators when you combine both of them. Yeah. And then you can take decisions in advance. I think yeah. this, yeah, this is a good point. Yeah. And I like that. Because I, I, I find a threshold. They find a threshold. They say, okay, if I reach this threshold, what can I do? Yeah. And this is also a risk response. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And it might be that, you know, if, you've, if you're thinking about your, if you're doing your risk analysis and planning properly, you should be thinking, what are the events that could trigger this risk to happen so that you can actually have a leading indicator of the risk, which I think that's is it. important. Um, so, so that's nice. I think we've got there. I think the, you know, we've got the whole idea about knowing when to raise an issue because it's, it's got big enough and scary enough. We've got the idea of being upfront and honest with everybody if, and, and also the idea of engaging the team to help solve it. And I think that, that enables you to go to your board, to your sponsor, to your client and say, this is what's happened. This is what it means. Here are the options we looked at. And this is our recommendation. That's and, it. you know, what sponsor wouldn't be happy to receive that knowing that they're in good hands? That's it. I think this shows that you're the real manager. You are, met, you are able to manage things. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So that's your job. And that's what I have to do. <laughs> I think if you don't say, okay, I have a mistake, we are, we are wrong, you are bad news, but what's next? I don't know. So <laughs> you, yeah. there's no reason for being that. Excellent. That has been a really fantastic solution to a problem that's come from the community. We'll be looking at lots more of those with other project managers out there who want to engage. Um, but in the meantime, Elio, how can people get in touch with you if they want to engage with you and find out more about your thinking about uh, risks and projects th in general? I think the best way is by the website, flexmodel.com, flex with KS mm -hmm. at the end, not with X, flexmodel.com, or by LinkedIn. You can find me in LinkedIn, it was Elio with H, Elio R Costa. And Excellent. that's it. You can I'll find the that. links in the description. Okay, thanks. Elio Costa, thank you very much. Bye-bye, thank you.